Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Historical Humans Reacts. Today we're bringing you something quite special as scientists and linguists manage to crack a new historic language. I know that's an awful buildup, but Colm, do you just want to dive us right in here? Yeah, certainly. So uh, in the modern era, there's very few languages and writing systems that we cannot read. Uh, among the ones that we cannot, uh, up until very much, I think, almost this year, uh, we could not read a language known as Linear Elamite. It is a 4,000-year-old uh, writing system used in Iran. It is, uh, it is uh, one of the oldest writing systems in existence. And uh, a, this year, a man named Francois Desset, a uh, professor at the University of Tehran, uh, announced a decipherment of that language. Uh, this deciphering is still controversial and requires, of course, more testing, but the fact that we even have a passable translation for this language is huge progress. So we're all very excited. Yes. It's not very often that you talk about people being able to crack these languages and to be able to decipher them. And that's something that I think a lot of us take for granted is there's many historical languages that have been deciphered already. I mean, the Rosetta Stone, I feel like every single person has at least heard of them. And the Rosetta Stone for this language is some silver beakers. Oh, that's sick. And yeah. quite literally, they reference the Rosetta Stone in this article, which is incredible. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, one, one of the favorite things about this writing is it is uh, contemporaneous with a uh, cuneiform in sumeria and if we correctly translate this wholly independent language it uh potentially shifts the vector from the beginning of writing uh out from sumeria possibly into the elamite territories as it seemed as a uh, linear elamite is the successor of proto elamite which is an even older form of the language so there's a potential to really shift how we understand the cradle of civilization. God, it it really makes you take a step back and really understand just how much we know and how little we don't know. And yeah. I, I know that's a very vague statement, but it's very true. Like you hear about these things and you realize like there was an entire language that had been lost that we potentially may have just rediscovered. And this, this is just a written one. The amount of languages that have come and gone before the yeah. invention of writing mm -hmm. in any part of the world is, like, yeah. astronomical. Uh, one of my favorite examples of, like, language in general is Papua New Guinea, where there's just mm -hmm. so many languages within such a small, oh, well, yeah. arguably small space, com or comparatively small space. But you know, debate on whether or not each region has how many languages there are, you know, it's like debated. Um, but still, before written language, you know, how many languages were there for humanity in general? I mean, I also think it's important to point out that even to this day, there are thousands and thousands of languages that are critically endangered either due to cultural assimilation of these minority groups into larger cultures. I mean, or it could be government um, forced, like, unfortunately, the the situation with the Uyghurs. Like, there's a lot of destruction of languages happening on a daily basis, even to this day. Yeah. But uh, definitely. you want to take us to the early history of the writing systems, Colm? Sure. So, uh, Linear Elamite is the written language of the people of the city of Susa. Uh, the term Elamite comes from the Sumerians. Uh, this is the word by which the Sumerians knew the people of Susa to be. Uh, so that is where we get the term from. And uh, Linear, uh, uh, the Elamite written language is uh, dates back about 5,000 years. So this is about contemporaneous uh to the existence of cuneiform in sumeria which dates back uh exact uh we know to be 3100 years and so the these are very contemporary 
writing systems that develop. And the fact that Elamite, uh, both proto and linear, do not use cuneiform symbols uh, speaks a lot to just how important and integral this language was and how culturally independent the Elamites were from the Sumerians. Yeah, that's huge. There's to have a, a different writing yeah. system entirely. Yeah. Yeah. There is a common practice in like the history of the world with Mesopotamia as the cradle of civilization, where like the Sumerians invent cuneiform. That language then spreads to the Mediterranean coast, becomes the Phoenician alphabet, which in turn crosses uh the sea to Greece to become the Greek alphabet. And that's where you get writing in Europe. If there's another language, another writing system right next door to, to the Sumerians at the same time. Well, it's also important to know that writing is a tool. So no language. So like mm -hmm. the idea that, well, I think if I remember, if I am remembering correctly, cuneiform was developed originally as like for administration purposes, specifically yes, it was. when it comes to storage. And yeah, it was an accounting, accounting spreadsheet. <laughs> if only we had a way to record all of these grain. So yeah, and so the question becomes whether or not, you know, um, the importance of writing in general, because we do see um, during the fall of the Bronze Age, writing fall out of use, at least in Greece. Yep. So because we see the break between linear A Greek or and linear B. Um, so I think I think that one's one of the more interesting takes. So, um, there's some links in the article from the Smithsonian uh, that talks about the Elamites, and I saw that like I kind of like briefly went through it, but apparently there hasn't really been any religious text preserved about the Elamites. Yeah. Um. Uh, so I think that's pretty interesting, which means like. Or I guess which could possibly mean that um, there's still a big element of oral tradition rather yeah. than, you know, um, depending on what's translated on these beakers, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. Speaking of the beakers, one of the reasons why linear Lamite has been so hard to translate is there are only 43 known instances of the language wow. currently in existence. Wow. Uh, the key break yeah the key breaker being a pair of beakers uh from a royal burial for, uh around 2000 bc they come from two separate burials from two separate dynasties and they both use linear alumni and it's sort of these two things juxtaposed together along with the other uh 40 some inscriptions that has allowed uh that sort of allowed uh, us to or archaeologists to translate it <laughs> or at least provide a translation of it so i don't believe this article provides the the translation but it does give like um um what is it like a description or like a figure yeah. of how he does it and anyone who studies linguistics might look at this and be like oh yeah that's like that's pretty typical but like if you look at this this looks completely alien on how they're trying how they would translate because you have to translate the symbols into sounds and when you yeah. don't have people speaking the sounds yeah it's kind of hard yeah it is very difficult uh however they the current claim by deset is that with this with his translation system you can read 72 of the linear uh elamite symbols which is 96 of the known symbols in this language wow yeah and uh and that does seem like a very massive number especially given uh how few letters there are in our alphabet but keep in mind we're not just talking about what would be an alphabet uh because even looking at our alphabet we have other symbols uh you know there is you know exclamation marks question marks things like that that yeah, would percent. count as a symbol and yeah and expand on what would be considered symbols additionally 
Uh, I don't believe it specifies, but I do. I I do not think this is a alphabet lang alphabetized language. It seems more. Uh, it's a pictographic. Syllabic. Yeah. So yeah, it's, a, it's a pictographic syllabic is what it appears to have been translated as. So apparently, um, what's unique about this compared to cuneiform hieroglyphics, because hieroglyphics use and cuneiform use symbols denoting both sounds and logograms. Mm -hmm. But apparent, according to Desit, this linear Elamite uh, uses an approach much like a modern alphabet, where the script draws solely on syllables. Yeah. The other yep. thing that's really prominent about this deciphering is a lot of um, Desset's contemporaries also say that it's very convincing and it is very plausible, which in the mm -hmm. academic world is like winning the jackpot of getting people saying that your work is plausible because yeah. they will dissect it to the umpteenth degree just to like have that little niche mm -hmm. point. But like Manfred Kreberneck, um, an expert on near Eastern studies at the German university of Jena, um, said that the case was convincing Matthew Stolper, a seriologist at the university of Chicago says the argument's clear, coherent, and plausible. Piotr Steinkeller, an Assyriologist at Harvard, is quite convinced by the argument. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, yeah. And uh, so, so, this could easily so this could be a contender for the first phonetic alphabet predating yeah. the Phoenicians. Yeah. Yeah, because the what we've been dancing around all night is uh, the Phoenician alphabet, which dates to 1100 BCE, is considered the first phonetic alphabet. And this alphabet predates that by at least 900 years. We're going to have to yeah, change yeah. the origin of the word phonetic then. Because we get yeah, phonetic too late. from Phoenician. Too late. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be Elamic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking in Elamic languages. I, like I mean, yeah. alphabet's already a combination of yeah. alpha and beta. Yeah, because yeah, of the Greeks. Yeah. And uh, the language could even... Assuming proto uh, alamite is the same vein as linear alamite, then the first phonetic alphabet goes all the way back to 3000 BCE and predates the Phoenicians by 1900 years. It's wow. also a possibility that this linear alamite it might be a similar situation to uh, the hieroglyphs in Egypt, where Egyptians typically spoke uh, what is it called? Yeah cosmic or comedic no not comedic well i guess comedic yeah. but um the language that they tip wrote in as like and like regular not administrative stuff or like what you might see on uh structures um is different is different compared to the hieroglyphs so what we could so it's possible that maybe like cuneiform might have been used as an administrative for administrative purposes while linear e or sorry, linear lamnite could have been like the language of the people, like the written language of everyday people. Yeah. And although, again, depending, uh, depends. Uh, yeah. Although the two vessels that did allow us to translate linear lamnite are grave goods from royal tombs. <laughs> but at How the same point, how did we point, get those? You you also gotta realize that the kings, the royals, have the wealth to be able to afford a writing, and yeah. like you. I think a lot of people fail to remember that in the past writing and the ability to read was in itself like a wealthy ability or religious in some cases. Uh, depending. It was, it was a, it was a power ability. Yeah. It, it was, it was tied to access to wealth and power. So it's not uncommon that you'll see people of in powers of position, positions of power having these kinds of goods. I mean, also, there's also has to be a use for it for people to also want to use the written language anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like accounting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and recording just... history. Yeah, people so... tend, tend to want to write down what happened. <laughs> but then there's also biased. the oral tradition, so they can tell that. Yeah. Well, then oral became written. But yeah, always. I, I think that's a good point here for us to pause because I think we did a good job of describing it. Like it's a, it's a really big discovery and it's something that's quite literally rewriting or 
rewriting history, no pun intended. But um, if you guys enjoyed this video and you enjoyed watching content like this, drop a like down below. Be sure to subscribe. If you have any suggestions of things we should check out, just let us know. And on that note, we'll see you guys next week with our next React video. Peace.